What PersonaGrip does is it changes, at least in the human machine interface, the primary mode of communication from friction to leverage. Now, power steering, like I say, is, is mainly a last resort in, in the case of a race car. Usually what happens is the driver's fatigue resistance is exceeded before the checkered flag. The team will do whatever they can to the car, pull some caster out, you know, whatever, to get the steering effort down so that the driver can actually be happy and content and focus on the task at hand rather than the hand at task. What we end up with with a hydraulic system is a, a huge mechanical advantage uh, in the fulcrum, we'll call it, from the feedback to the power. Obviously, steering wheel, you're trying to put power through the steering wheel to get to the ground, but at the same time, because the center of pressure of the contact patch trails the steering axis using what we call pneumatic trail, uh, we end up with some resistance. And that resistance is directly proportional to the amount of traction under the front tires. Now, the good news is that that traction peaks and goes away. In other words, as the tire is slipping, look, the tire tries to go in the direction it's pointed, but the rear tires are commissioned to drive it straight forward, so they actually slip a little bit. Well, the difference between where it's actually going and where it's pointed is called a slip angle. And what happens is, as a tire begins to slip, it begins to build up cornering force. But then if it slips too much, it starts acting like a brake and the cornering forces drop, and it starts to go away. So what you end up with is this force that builds up, and then it goes away, and that's called a bell curve. When something builds up and then goes away, that's a bell curve just so happens that the tire also has uh, another characteristic or parameter that follows that, and that's load. Obviously, you put more weight on something, the harder it is to try to pull something out from underneath it. And there comes a point where all of a sudden the coefficient of friction changes once the tire gets overloaded, and that also happens to follow a bell curve. Now, once you leave the pits, assuming you're not driving obviously an Indy car, Formula One car with a multitude of adjustments, you basically have two sets of controls, your hand controls and your feet controls. The feet controls swing, control the swing of the fuzzy dice in this direction. In other words, you step on the gas, fuzzy dice come back, squeeze down on the brake, fuzzy dice go forward. When you turn the wheel to the left, they swing to the outside on the right and vice versa for a right-hand turn. And what happens is as you approach the limit, at about 70% of its capability, a vibration is set up. And a lot of the Europeans that I've met talk about this vibration as a means for sensing the limit. Well, if you're using a standard steering wheel, which relies on friction, you therefore have to squeeze the steering wheel in order to turn it. And if the forces, the cornering forces rise, you have to squeeze harder. What you're doing is you're increasing the coupling between your hand and the steering wheel. So what you end up doing is you end up being able to read better the vibration. But the problem is that same tension here in the forearm is blocking the very feedback. Because remember, the idea, the name of the game is to ride the top of the muse slip curve. And that's relatively flat at the top. So you're only trying to read very minute changes in the difference of the cornering force. Well, if you could somehow relax your grip so you're not blocking that information, because remember, nerve conduction, you've got motor nerve conduction, meaning the brain is sending signals to the muscles to activate, and the amount of resistance is being read by what's left over, uh, and that is the, the sensing component. And so if you've got a death grip here, there's not much bandwidth, let's, uh, let's say, left over for sensing. But if we can build up a surface on the steering wheel, so now we no longer have to squeeze the wheel, but we can relax our grip on the wheel, and then the pure force we put into it is exactly opposite, in this case, of the force that's resisting. In other words, the input force is parallel to the resistance force. And that's how you're able to read with what we call a better signal to noise ratio, the resistance, and since that resistance follows the mu slip curve, that's what you want.